Strategies and Applications for Managing Foreign Currency Risk. In this session, we shall see how to use currency forward or futures contracts to change currency risk exposure. Remember, you might have a company which is exporting and hence would have sales which are denominated in foreign currency. It could also have receivables denominated in foreign currency. So it's exposed to currency transaction risk as well as translation risk. It might want to hedge itself against forex risk. You might as well have an importer who's purchasing from overseas and hence has purchases which is denominated in foreign currency. It could have payables denominated in foreign currency and might want to hedge itself against forex risk. For an exporter, since it would be receiving foreign currency, it would want to sell foreign currency on a forward basis. For, a, for an importer, there would be payables in foreign currency and it would look to purchase foreign currency on a forward basis. So the idea is to remove uncertainty in terms of the domestic currency cash flows on account of fluctuation in the exchange rate. You can also have a portfolio fund manager who has some investments overseas and hence the investments, which happens to be an asset, is denominated in foreign currency. If I would want to hedge against currency risk, I would, I would look to sell the foreign currency on a forward basis. So what you need to remember, if you have foreign currency asset, you're going to hedge it by selling it on a forward basis. Okay, so you're going to sell the foreign currency on a forward basis. And if you have a foreign currency liability and you want to hedge yourself against it, you're going to buy the foreign currency on a forward basis. So there we have the first example. Zippy Airlines is a startup airline and intends to build its fleet of new aircrafts by purchasing 400 million of Airbus planes. Purchase contract is signed at the beginning of the year and the transaction will take place at the end of the year. If Zippy Airlines domestic currency happens to be Euro, it would not, it would not really be bothered about, about the exchange rates because uh, it, it knows that it needs to pay 400 million Euro. But then Zippy is a US firm and all its financial statements are prepared in US dollars. If Euro appreciates over time, it would have to shell out much more in US dollar terms, right? Because it would be purchasing these Euros at the time of payment. So risk managers at Zippy are concerned about foreign currency risk embedded in the purchase contract. If the Euro appreciates against the US dollar significantly between now and the end of the year, the firm will have to pay significantly more in US dollars to buy the fleet of planes. The risk manager considers using a currency forward contract to hedge. So am I going to go long Euro forward basis or am I going to go short Euro forward? Now, since Zippy has a liability, remember guys, this is a liability. It has to pay. In that case, I'm going to go long foreign currency. So in this case, the foreign currency is Euro. I'm going to go long Euro forward basis. The, the forward rate for December is currently trading at or let's say currently quoted at $1.36 per euro. And at the end of the year, the spot euro price turns out to be $1.23 a euro. That's a little bad news because we realize that having gone long forward, we would end up paying 400 into 1.36 in dollar terms because this is what we would be paying. And we know this amount in advance. So there is a degree of certainty in terms of what I need to pay. But had we had not covered ourselves or had had Zippy not covered itself by way of this forward position, it would have transacted in the spot market and this is what it would have paid to buy 400 million euro and this is the dollar amount that it would have had to pay and this clearly would have been a lower cash outflow. But bad luck, we need to determine the appropriate hedge. We've already kind of got a sense we're going to go long euro forward and we're going to go long 400 euro million on a forward basis and discuss the firm's actions and cash flows at the end of the year. So let's very quickly go through the solution. Uh, given the firm's need to buy Euro in the future to satisfy the purchase contract to hedge, the firm should buy Euro forward. The risk manager should buy 400 million Euro forward at the forward price of $1.36 per Euro. Now there's going to be no cash flow today and that's something that all of you would be aware of in a forward contract you agree on a certain price and, and the exchange of consideration is going to take place sometime in the future uh, on the agreed date, on the date of settlement. Today, there's no cash flow. You just have an agreement in place. 
But then Zippy, which is essentially buying Euro and the forward dealer who's looking to sell Euro on a forward basis to Zippy, both are exposed to credit risk of the other party. There's clearly going to be a counterparty credit risk, which would exist in a forward contract. And in terms of cash flows, the firm would take delivery of 400 million euro and would pay 400 into 1.36. Guys, remember 1.36 dollar per euro. That's the rate which has been agreed. And I'm going to buy 400 million euro. So that basically translates into uh, 544 million dollars. So the firm locks in the fixed euro price of 1.36 dollar per euro. Let's look at another example. And in this case, we are going to have receivables denominated in foreign currency. So Hollywood Inc. is an independent U.S. movie production company. The company signs a contract at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the year on five action movies with a Chinese media distributor. The five movies will be released in China this summer. The contract is quoted in Chinese currency RMB in the amount of 1 billion RMB. So uh, Hollywood is going to get 1 billion RMB from the Chinese media company. The payment would be made on June 1st, right before the movies are released in China. So I'm going to have a receivable. So this is a receivable, which is denominated in foreign currency. So I would look to sell foreign currency on a forward basis because you have a receivable. When we have FC receivable foreign currency asset, we sell it on a forward basis. The company is concerned about foreign currency risk and would want to hedge itself. Now, the concern is going to be what if RMB depreciates against US dollar and this 1 billion RMB fetches uh, a lower amount of US dollar. So the consultants, the firm consultants suggest using currency forward contracts to hedge against currency fluctuations. Well, currently the forward uh, RMB is quoting at $0.16 per RMB. So if this is the rate that I lock in, so if I decide to sell my RMB receivables, as in when, when, when I receive it, if I sell it at this price, then 1 million RMB, 1 billion RMB, okay, would translate into $0.16 billion, right? Which is $160 million to be precise. That's how it would be. Now on June 1st, let's say the spot RMB price turns out to be $0.14 per RMB. So that's, that's good for me because had we had not covered ourselves, we would have fetched $140 million. So, well, in hindsight, Hollywood would realize that it actually did a good thing to have covered itself by way of this forward contract. So we need to determine the appropriate hedge. It's pretty much apparent. Uh, Hollywood is going to go short RMB on a forward basis. And what's the amount that it's going to go short? It's going to go short 1 billion RMB on a forward basis. And at this agreed price, $0.16 per RMB. So let's just have a quick uh, look at the solution, which is on discussed lines. The US firm will receive foreign currency RMB in June that it tends to exchange for US dollar in June, but it would not want to be exposed to the spot market vagaries. Uh, the firm should sell RMB forward, should sell RMB forward. It has RMB assets in its books. We're going to sell RMB forward. The firm should sell 1 billion RMB at this agreed rate. And doing so, uh, it would ensure that it receives $160 million from the forward dealer. So the firm would collect 1 billion RMB on the said day, would deliver the 1 billion euro to the forward contract dealer, who in turn would give the promised amount, which is $160 million. Uh, the spot RMB 0.14 does not at all play any role. But had we had not gone for the hedge, well, this is the rate at which we would have sold 1 billion RMB to fetch $140 million. So that's a less attractive amount. Hence, having taken a forward position was actually a good decision turned out to be a good decision. Let's look at another example. Here we would bring in a portfolio manager, a US portfolio manager who controls 20 million euro. So that's the amount of uh, uh, investment that it has in the Eurozone stock market. Okay, so the domestic currency for the US portfolio manager is dollar. 
while it has investment to the tune of 20 million euro in the euro stock markets. The manager prefers to lock in a terminal value denominated in the US dollar. Now the problem is we don't know to what extent would this value go up or go down in euro terms. So how much of euro value should I should I should I go and hedge and ensure that I get a certain amount of US dollar? So there is equity risk uh, apart from currency risk. So that the portfolio is free of equity market risk. So we see that the portfolio manager wants to hedge against equity market risk as well as foreign currency risk. Remember guys, if I have a stock exposure and I take a stock hedge, that would expectedly, you know, by and large, give me the risk-free return of which currency? Of the currency in which these stocks are denominated. So let's say here the stocks are denominated in euro, I should be able to fetch a euro risk-free return. But once I add, once I add a currency hedge to it, I should be able to then fetch the risk-free return of dollar. Okay, so stock exposure plus stock hedge plus currency hedge should ensure by and large risk-free return in domestic currency terms and stock plus stock hedge should ensure risk-free return in foreign currency terms. Uh, assuming that these stocks are denominated in foreign currency. So this is important and you should keep in mind. The market value of the stock portfolio currently is 20 million as discussed and the beta of the portfolio is 1.15. So we want to neutralize the beta, isn't it? A three month stock index futures, okay, that's available to us, Eurozone, it's priced at 275200 with a beta of 0 0.95. We know how to neutralize beta, right? We've done umpteen problems. The three-month Eurozone risk-free rate is 4%. So we'll see whether we really get this kind of a return once we hedge. The three-month US risk-free rate is 3%. Uh, so the Eurozone risk-free rate is 4%. The US risk-free rate is 3%. Uh, the spot exchange rate is $1.3 per euro currently. The manager would use a dollar-denominated forward contract on the euro. So since we are going to have euro asset in our books, we are going to sell euro on a forward basis, okay? And this is the rate that we can lock in. Three months later, so these things happen. Stock portfolio loses 4.2%. Uh, the Eurozone index futures contract price decreases to this because overall the market has gone down and hence the index futures price as well goes down. Spot euro price becomes $1.33 per euro. So the euro seems to have appreciated over time. We need to construct a hedging strategy so that the portfolio is free of both equity risk and currency risk, and then compute the manager's cash flow at the end of three months. So let's try and set up the information. We have stock portfolio, which is worth 20 million euro. And in dollar terms, it would be 20 into 1.3, which is $26 million. Uh, the beta of my portfolio is 1.15 and I want to neutralize the beta. So you would say, hey, short stock index futures, isn't it? Because that will help me neutralize the beta. How many contracts should I go and short? So let's find out N and we'll also get the sign to confirm whether we really go and short. So my target beta is zero, my current beta is 1.15 into my portfolio value, which is 20 million, right? In euro terms, and we're going, to, we're going to go ahead and take position in stock index future, which has a beta of 0 0.95 into the value of one stock future contract, which is 275200. Once we work this out, we get minus 87.97. So the minus sign confirms that I'm going to take a short position. In how many lots? Nearly 88 lots. So we're going to short 88 contracts of index futures. So having shorted 88 contracts of, of index futures, we now would be able to say that we have hedged ourselves against equity risk. So this would ensure that the manager would be able to earn the risk-free return of euro, which is 4%.